Rain or shine, it's here to make you laugh. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. And now your host, Kyle Can I hear me? (laughs) Can you hear you? Can you hear you? (laughs) Can you hear me? Can you hear me, me Major Tom? Can you hear me? Can you hear Doc? <laughs> that actually sounded like pretty good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a Disney princess voice sometimes. <laughs> I mean, clearly. There's nothing to apologize for. I don't know why you're, yeah. I don't know, and man. also... Why haven't we started a boy band yet? I don't know. <laughs> There's so me, many questions. Me and Jared had this conversation earlier at work because we now work together. Um, but I was like, well, how come between like, I was like between me, you, Doc and Kyle, how come we have not started a fake boy band yet? Like better question. Why haven't we started a real boy band yet? Because a fake boy band will be even more hilarious. We don't have to take it seriously. We can do it just for the shits and giggles. When we become a real boy band, that's when Kendra becomes like our fucking mom and then starts like whoring us out for money. Beating you guys. Exactly. That too. Like to live up to perfection. I approve of both. And I don't want the second part. It just seems like she could already do that. Like, I don't really want her to do that for money. I don't know. I feel like it's a little hot. I mean, co- yeah. You know what's really <laughs> hot? The Steamboat Comedy Podcast. <laughs> Did you sneak us in Thanks again? for listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. I turned it on like two masters. minutes ago, but Damn it, dude. I thought this was just like the pre-talk, and then you're going to be like, I'm clicking the button, and nope. you're going to do like, welcome. No. You well, s- see, I, I stood a- away from the computer like a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. but I thought you were just like Sneaky over boy. there. <laughs> That you were gonna give me a damn, dude. Now, now you're gonna have oh, the whole. On. That's that's the best intro I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, right? <laughs> you just have a whole conversation about boy bands. Is our intro. We got Whatever. boys the boat coming 2020. Boys yeah. at the boat, baby. The boat, boat street boys. Don't worry as about it. The, the boat street boys worse. actually sounds dope <laughs> as fuck. So again, welcome to the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. I'm your host, Jed again, Kyle Ruff. Joining me to my right is the. Hilarious young lady, Kaylin Smith. Say hello. Oh, hey, guys. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get, get your face in that bitch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just I've, I've bring I've it closer to your face. I've easy. heard that <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you guys are the one that put it there, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm just a normal heterosexual person. <laughs> Why is this so weird? I know. <laughs> Going around, we've got, speaking of a normal heterosexual person, Miles Sanchez. Oh, so normal. The most normal. The most Boringly normal, normal Miles Boringly Sanchez. Boringly normal Miles Sanchez with no no alternate egos or nicknames or nothing. Can we talk about that earring? <laughs> Dude. Uh, we'll get there. But first, <laughs> we first need to introduce, joining us for the first time on the Steamboat Comedy Podcast, gentle, it's my first Mr. Time. Joe <laughs> Dockery. Doc, say hello. Uh, hello out there. Go <laughs> <laughs> for the Casey Casey. That was good. That move was your, move your mic up a little bit into, <laughs> your, into your mouth hole. Is this this way? Yeah, it's so I use two, yeah. Hands? two hands. Two Don't hands. forget to cover the balls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get closer to that thing, too. Oh, All up in there. Oh, I'm like, you want to kiss mix it. like Betty Crocker, okay? <laughs> like you can't get any further in. God damn it. <laughs> Betty Crocker. All right. So. We are all joined here today. It's the first time we've done a podcast. We haven't had a normal podcast in like a month. Yeah, we're finally back on track a little bit. You know what I mean? Getting back in it. Getting back in. This is like my second job right now. Right? It's really weird watching on that ball, Doc. I almost <laughs> want to like get you on a regular <laughs> chair. Stop moving around so much. I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> the edge of the there round. The edge of the <laughs> balls. <laughs> well, this is the exact same shape as the planet. That I don't want to fall off just the talk edge. About that sounds like some flat earther shit. <laughs> <laughs> the edge of the round planet, okay? <laughs> that's I, that's like my the, favorite the, Stephen King book. There's that, that <laughs> famous like uh, flat earther Facebook comment where it's like there's around the world. Yeah, say there's, <laughs> say there's thousands of all around the globe, and so it's just like around? say that again but slower. <laughs> oh, oh man, around, around the globe. Why? <laughs> right? The the disc all around the disc. Yeah. But we are gathered here today to talk of our recent success, our show, the comedy in the park. Oh God, I thought we were going to get married or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is where I just get on a knee and engage the doc for no reason. <laughs> uh, but 
For those who hadn't heard or didn't have the pleasure to come, we just did our first outdoor comedy show at the Yampa River Botanic Park, and it was awesome. It was a great time. We had two shows that are both sold out, which, you know, we won't go over what the maximum number was to make us. You but know, we sold it out. But we sold, sold it, it out. It there out. was at least two digits in that number. There's at least <laughs> double digits of people. <laughs> but it was great. We had a good turnout. Everyone was really into it. Uh, everyone here was in that show. So we want to get together, talk about our experience, bring back the uh, the old concept we used to do of the Laugh Lab a bit. We talk about our bit so we can play a little bit for you as well. If you did not have the pleasure of attending Comedy in the Park, you can watch the entire show, both shows, on our YouTube page or at steamboatcomedy.com, which you might be using to listen to this anyway, so hopefully you're aware of it. But if not, <laughs> you can go there and check it out. So yeah, just going around, Kaylin, how'd you think the whole thing went? Uh, it was certainly the most beautiful comedy show I've ever been to. Yeah, right? Uh, straight up green yeah. screen, man. That's what it looks like. Uh, every time I watch the videos, it straight up looks like, dude... We just put a green screen behind us. Describe like the the setup. Oh god, it's like this pastoral, beautiful like pond with you know wildlife and like ducks and and birds and like little children and we're just up there just absolutely ripping the world a new asshole in front of all of it. <laughs> and then Kyle right right beforehand told us that we couldn't curse or like do any kind of adult language, which totally. <laughs> I was told like later on is like. All right, give your best PG thirteen set. Well, well that's that's what I told the paper. They're like, "Is it family <laughs> friendly?" And I was like, "Uh, uh, it's PG thirteen. How about that?" And I was, yeah. so I was like, "Okay, okay." Actually, you know, so I then literally wrote my set as if it were like a PG thirteen action movie. You know what I mean? Like you can. You can get away with a lot of stuff in a PG. I mean, I've Titanic was PG thirteen, and there was titties in there. There were boobs in that. Set for I got sure. to see on tape. And also, first time like for me too. More importantly, Mine massive well. amounts of death. So, also the death. Also, as, as the dudes think, we're all like, "Do the tits." I know. I don't even remember that being like the first boob shot. Although it probably was for me too. But I was just kind of like, "Eh." Well, you have boobs, so it's like, yeah. But we were like, "Hey, dude. Hey, did you see Titanic? I know it sounds lame as shit, but." Like, go see it. <laughs> you see them titties? Did you see them titties? They no. were so artful, and that's Draw why it's PG-13. Oh, yeah, because it is in an artistic <laughs> way. Like, yeah, they were on a painting, but also. <laughs> <laughs> but also, they were spectacular. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't, so. I love how the guy's really mad when that didn't really survive the vault either. He, like, opens it up, and just sees that. He's like, ah! No? I don't know what you're referring to. He, I guess he's referring to the painting being all it, like, uh, oh, this up is in the movie. Shit. The guy's like upset about it oh. when they're actually like, breaking into the vault. Oh, I didn't remember that part. It's been, dude, it's been so long. Yeah. Kyle Since only remembered the boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fun fact about that movie, actually. Uh, that was uh, my great grand uncle and aunt that were also in that, portrayed in that movie because uh, uh, they were like two of the, the old couple that refused to get off the boat and then they like sat in the bed together. Uh, I'm related to them, in, uh -huh. a, in a distant, oh, yeah. in a distant way. But I'm just <laughs> saying. So wait, did like, they you know, did they die on the ship? They did. They, 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 they had living children, so their their line survived. But oh, they nice. did die on the ship. Yeah. Nice. They would have worn masks. They would have. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how they could have died. <laughs> 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 they have worn masks. They went down with the ship. You know, that's kind of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of the mask, that's why the show was such a great thing. Obviously, everyone knows the world is ending and there hasn't really been much that we could do. And a big thanks to uh, our friend Pat Truer, who headlined the show for us. And if you heard on our last podcast with him, he was the one who was like, Kyle, get your shit together and put together an outdoor show. And I was like, oh, fine. So thanks to him for making this happen, well, I mean, despite all the stuff. Too. I mean, you did it, though. Oh, well, thanks. I mean, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, I, Doc helped a lot. I mean, all you guys pitched in a lot. And I, I just want to say, I found it. <laughs> it was the first time Miles, it was it was on the podcast. But he was exactly. like, the potato gardens. And I was like, that sounds like bullshit. I don't know if I said that. No, he didn't. But, but I literally <laughs> was like, hey, guys, this is a really cool place called the potato gardens. Everyone was like, shut up, Miles. That's bullshit. <laughs> I was like, Whatever. <laughs> Well, it took me a while to just get their contact info. And once I did, they were like, can, yeah. Yeah, I bet, because I know that, like, I met that guy one time. Like, this guy is cool, but also. Well, shout out to uh, <laughs> Jennifer McNeil. Oh, McNeil. Oh, she's, McNeil. She's the one who uh, helped us organize this. She's the director over there, the Botanic Gardens. And, yeah, she was awesome. She was a great help. 
Uh, she wasn't there day of. It was, oh, now I'm blanking on dude's name. What was dude's name? Who was there? Jeff. Jeff, yes. Jeff was awesome. He was a big help, too, getting things set up for us. So big shout out to those guys. And we should be, hypothetically, going back there at some point soon. Because they kind of said, uh, like, when I first reached out, if I got a hold of them, they were like, yeah, like, do whatever you want. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> our schedule was open. Like, we had 20 bands, and 20 of them dropped out. So Dude, what day do you want to do it? That sounds yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah that's super fun. The I mean, we got the blueprint now. Like we've already planted the idea. Exactly. Yeah. And for, Shut, and for up. Anyway, <laughs> Shut up. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> All right. We'll leave those jokes alone. <laughs> Let's talk about Doc's set on that. All yeah. right. So king of dad jokes, man. Seriously. So well, first I want to <laughs> say a big uh, give Doc a big thanks for filling in. So uh, Jared, who is a frequent. Uh, co-host of the steamboat comedy podcast was supposed to do the show and at the last minute he got something that somewhat resembled the rona and so he went into hiding like witness protection (laughs) and duck came up like a hero and was like put me in coach I'm here to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to play. Was it like, remember the Titans when we had a really cool black quarterback and then we got this long-haired hippie kid? Sorry. He's all like, hey, guys, I know what to do. And we're like, okay. Like, I do yoga in the park. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kyle. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, the gay one from California. I remember yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> Who he looks a lot like right now. Rada Bias. Oh, no. Yeah, Sunshine was his name. Sunshine. I know so many kids <laughs> with long blonde hair who were nicknamed Sunshine after uh, that because of him. Not first or probably last time. We'll get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sunshine. Now let's tell you about your comedy show. So, yeah, but I, we. Uh, um, I looked like I was being named Sunshine just the way. I was walking around that stage. God dang. <laughs> God <laughs> Crossing dang. my legs. Well, that's another thing. Speaking of stage, <laughs> Doc was a big help uh, in oh, putting sure. that stage together. So well, very big manly. thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, thanks, there you go. <laughs> thanks, Sunshine. Really manly, you <laughs> gay Finally putting sunshine. that theater degree <laughs> to use, you know? So, um, yeah, but that's kind of like the point of the show. We're going to go around and talk about everyone performed and like what went well and uh, you know what we think we can work on and that kind of stuff. So, Doc... Doc came in, came up with his uh, compulsive dad jokes, <laughs> threw them out, and uh, got a few laughs for for a last minute bit. How do you how do you think the show went? How do you feel about it? Well, overall, it was uh, definitely a positive experience. We all kind of kicked the booty, as they would say. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't quite McLaughlin locked and loaded for my set, but you know, I tried. Was that is that you talking about your Sam McLaughlin joke? Yeah. I'm. Uh, apparently my accent f- combined with my nervous I think I called her McLaughlin I think she's just gonna come out holding two Glocks. guns and like you're saving the kids boy I got hollow points for you dogs in this McLaughlin <laughs> the yeah. arms I'm gonna put you in the arms yeah, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Like a platoon scene. Came up with a wrap up there. That's a great way to close it out because I would have kept going with lamer shit. And luckily, you were like, no, man, this is what you need to end it with right here. Call this my McLaughlin to put you in the arms of the angel. (laughs) That's perfect. Yeah, but uh, it was good. I mean, um, uh, Um, you got, like I said, you got some laughs. Yeah. It was good. Uh, I'm trying to remember. We just watched it a minute ago. Oh, yeah. I like to. uh, I like the uh, set on the Dilf joke because with uh, or being at the earlier show, there was a lot more children at it versus the second. Mm-hmm. So after I did that, I was like, you guys all know what Dilf means, right? I saw the fear in eyes. <laughs> I saw mothers being like, I swear to God, if my fucking husband finds out about this. <laughs> he does not know what this is yet. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Don't put this idea in his head. We still have dial up. He doesn't know what that is. Look at his right <laughs> arm. Look how weak it is. <laughs> <laughs> his marriage is still functioning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I really liked your uh, your Patriots joke. Uh, oh, yeah. dude, yeah, that one actually. <laughs> yeah, because I had to hit like every well. A lot of the single folks have touched upon the tender at this point and have seen like some of the cringeworthy profiles, and we all know how that goes. So, mm-hmm. I've been out of the dating scene for a while, and I've thought about getting back into it, but I decided if I was going to, got to start with Tinder. I just have to. It'd be too much fun. Like the first thing I'm gonna put on there in my profile, Patriots fan. Woo! 
Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, be careful with that. I'm actually an Eagles fan, but I'll tell you why. I'll put Patriots fan. Because if you put Patriots fan, you know right off the bat that both of you are super cool with cheating. <laughs> Told you I was a Birds fan. Yeah, yeah so uh, keep this thing rolling. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez What's also that? came up. He did a 10-minute spot in the show, Heck which is great. Had the uh, the full uh, chef uniform on, which is great. Didn't have the earring. Let's, let's, we need a quick uh, the, earring, earring. the earring was there. But was it? Dude, this is the whole thing. Well, see, that's probably why I wasn't that thrown off. I was like, oh, maybe he always had that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the thing is, yeah, is it, it, does. it snuck in during quarantine, and barely anyone has noticed. And it's kind of like cool because I thought everyone's gonna be like, "Man, what the fuck, Miles?" But literally, they're just like, "Oh, Miles is back. What's up?" And like, literally, it's been like, "Oh, nothing." Like, notice anything different about me? I didn't like, even uh, ask. But like, literally, like, <laughs> until someone's been like, "Oh, dude, that's sweet." I'm like, yeah, thanks, Have you bro. seen people's haircuts recently? Yeah, about to say, like, <laughs> my hair's gotten longer, and the only addition is that, like, I have this cool thing that hangs out at the bottom of my ear. The The thing is, is that, like, I started with just a regular, regular hoop, and then one day I got rid of A real, hoop? Just a regular genie hoop, just <laughs> one. Like, what are you, J-Lo? No, I was like a genie. Wait, yeah, well, give, me, give me the size of this hoop. You Apparently, you didn't even notice. That's that big. Okay. Uh, apparently... Crazy. Because I did this right at the start of quarantine, dude. Right at the start, because I was like, where the fuck is shit going? I was hanging out with some people. A homegirl was leaving. She's like, all right, I'm out of here, dude. Quarantine's getting real. I got to bail. And I was like, where? She's like, I got to get rid of some shit. She's like, I have these piercing needles. Anyone want a piercing before I go? And I'm like, fuck it. Like, just pierce my ear before you leave. And she did. And then I, like, didn't like the earring I had. And I got drunk on Amazon. And I bought one that had a feather attached to it. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got, I just got done watching That's My Boy with Adam Sandler. And you just felt inspired. And I was like, I want to look and see how much a freaking feather earring costs. And I was like, oh, shit. Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> turns out. Turns out. Turns out demand is low. The, yeah. <laughs> it turns out I can get a whole pack of them for fourteen dollars. Like literally. Wait, wait, how many feather earrings do you? No, own? no, no. Here's the thing, Kyle. Here's the thing. Like this one's just a feather, but they have one that's like have a feather attached to a chain that goes all the way down to you. Like yeah, for when I'm feeling real George Michaels, oh, boy. I can have one that hangs Are you down. Get a nipple piercing. And then no, piercing. Cause, uh, I had this conversation. <laughs> with all the way down to the belly button. Because here's the thing, like. There was a high <laughs> demand for piercing said day. They're like, uh, she's like, all right, guys, I only got like four needles. So it's like, you know, who wants what? And I was like, I'll take one ear piercing. And I was like, well, I want two. And I was like, well, that's cool. I'll just do the one. But then I'm like, well, which side do you do? Because like, Ooh. yeah, you Why know. Say, say, how that's George still... Michael do you want to be? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, well, the thing was like, well, well, from what I remember growing up was like <laughs> the left side. I actually had my ear pierced like in high school and then. I got in like I got dorm room wrestling match in college, and then it fell out, and I just I was going to school to be an EMT anyway, so I was having to take it out to go to like class. So like I just like when it like fell out the one day like after like a big dorm room like wrestling match like was I it like really want you to elaborate on that? <laughs> or was it like ripped out? I mean, I don't remember it coming out. Is I guess the thing. Like, I just remember like body slamming. Like coming out more George Michael. Still not saying phrasing <laughs> because okay, <laughs> it's not as all right. We're gonna get to real quick to the contraception. So, jokes. I mean, no, it was a dorm room, and everyone got a little drunk, and then it got to like uh, like a freaking like wrestling matches, like you know, like a fight club in the dorm rooms, and then one day I was like. All right, let's see if Miles can take on three of the smallest people here at the same time. Where so literally, did you go to college? so <laughs> literally, I'm <Alabama>. wrestling <laughs> Texas. Oh, even worse. <laughs> so, so I'm wrestling like these three small dudes at once. Literally, just like yeah, yeah, like power fist them away, and like one's like phrasing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so George Michael. <laughs> How's it, George Michael? You gotta have faith. Was I going to have fists when Wait. I was like punching these small children off of me? Or like not children? They're like. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Let's go ahead and wrap this story <laughs> up and start talking about your bit. Uh, uh, were we not talking about <laughs> phrasing? Like the whole time? No. Phrasing much? Yes. <laughs> so you're so you fisting want, these kids, right? You want to start talking about my bit? All right. So. And let's see that bit. It oscillates. This is why it's so hard for us to perform the botanical garden. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All those they were kids not are tiny like, children. They the were podcast. just tiny 18 year olds, but I was 19, so it was fine. Like, <laughs> it's legal. It's legal to beat up a bunch of. Anyways, it's fine. I lost an earring. 
I just left it out, and then I didn't pierce it till I was thirty. So that was that was ten years ago, probably. But anyways, all right. Well, a week ago you did a comedy <laughs> show. Did Tell I? us about that. Oh well, I do love that I brought back an old joke that I always bring back. The I don't juggle bitches, I juggle jobs, which I couldn't even say bitches because it was a PG thirteen show. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna save you know, that. You said ass like six times in like thirty seconds. Dude, I had. I was like, I can't. I'm gonna save a bitch for when a bitch is necessary, but I can say ass all I want. It's a PG-13 show. I like, guess I don't actually. I made that stipulation. I don't even know what the rules are. Yeah, you don't even know what the rules are, man. You can say ass as much as you want. All right, bitch. You're only allowed that like ass out. five or ten of those, and you're only allowed one f bomb, and apparently only like thirty seconds of titties showing. I was like, all right, well, well they have to be artful titties. Exactly, and my titties aren't artful, and they don't have a piercing. <laughs> Apparently, not yet. So no. <laughs> here's here's the whole thing with that. As as a straight dude, which nipple do you get pierced? Do you get the? Do, does it match with this one? Do I pierce the left nip? No, or? you should definitely do the opposite nipple. Then I, can, then, I then I can put a <laughs> chain. Get across. But the other then way. I can get a chain from this this earring to this nipple, so it's like a. That's what belt, I'm waiting for. You know? It's like Xerxes. Yeah, yeah, from yeah I get Xerxes. No, nah, dude, I don't want to be that guy. I would get rid of this earring before that would ever actually happen. <laughs> I just be like, you know what? This is. I don't. I don't want to be this guy anymore. Like you can have it. Then I threw it. Did on the it just break? <laughs> <laughs> ah, he just tossed it on the table and it broke. No, I think it just. It's all right. He's got a whole case of them apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just the feathers gonna get really long. <laughs> I loved with the kid in college that used to just leave his Prince Albert on the table all the time. Uh, <sighs> that's what I was gonna say. You had a chance for a free piercing and you went ear. <laughs> yeah, that's like the least expensive one. <laughs> yeah, but also the least just... painful one. Literally, she was like, this girl "All right, I'm gonna do it." And I was like, "Do pierce do... any part of your body?" And you were like, "Yeah." Uh, and you okay. have a nut sack, and you didn't even take advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I didn't think like you guys. Like uh, that's how me and my friend Dennis there. became great friends. You pierced each other's <laughs> dicks. What? 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 So about your set, <laughs> Miles. <laughs> so my mom actually saw this show. It made me happy because my mom always said, like, no offense. Like, I don't really want to watch your comedy. And I'm like, you know what? I get it because you're like, no offense. Fuck you, mom. No, actually, I, 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 I cuss a lot in my comedy, which this one was like, luckily, like you said, PG-13. Is your mom easily, easily offended then? You know, the funny thing is my mom actually really liked my bit at the end. Which really took me off guard because I guess she liked the twist. I, I told all my African American jokes at the end, mm-hmm. and I was very hesitant about that. You in full Alabama, folks? He was just dropping n bombs left and right. Yeah, I dropped. He the- even put on that hood. I thought that wasn't tasteful. <laughs> A lot of my fellow uh, African American coworkers like Miles. Look, when you rap, and we noticed that you switched the n word to ninja. I'm like, well, that's because, I mean, I'm a chef, and I carry a knife, and we're all black a lot of times. Like, dude, it kind of works, you know? I'm not even mad to, like, switch up. I'm like, Miles, you can say it. You can say it. I'm like, nah, dude, I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. And all my white friends are like, Miles, why don't you say it? Why don't you say it? I'm like, duh, chill out. All right, you can say things that black people can't. Like, ranch dressing would go good on that, Kyler. <laughs> or, hi, Dad. <laughs> Or, thanks for the warning, officer. <laughs> y'all, I'm Miles Sanchez. Y'all been great tonight. I'm out of here. Thank you so much. <laughs> and that took everyone for a little bit of a loop, especially my loop, mom, because she was like, is he going to say the N-word? Is he going to say it? Oh, that N-word. Okay, he said that N-word. She was like, oh. and then she turned it off. No, actually, she, <laughs> she, she thought it was hilarious. I'm like, holy crap. My sister, on the other hand, who my brother-in-law convinced to watch it, did not think it was that funny, but mm. my sister just never thought it was good. It gave I, I felt like it was uh, so, like, well, that's actually like, of course you don't like you, it'd be it would be a shame if Miles was good at something and you were not, you know, so oh, oh. Me a hug. yeah, it's cool. It's OK. I'm better at stand up than my brother. So. That's cool. I saw his stand up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, better... true. it's true. Oh, yeah, it's I true. forgot your brother did that with Mike one time. Oh, yeah, yeah he did. He did. Yeah. He about killed me because I sent him up and then he was like, take me off. And then I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but he got up like a champ. Though. Yeah, he Props did. To him. He did. So what's he was your like, brother's name? 
Taylor. Shout out Taylor. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, he'll he'll listen to this. He always listen to my podcast. Actually. Nice. <laughs> um. Well, no, I thought those jokes were a little edgy, but it was fun. It got people kind of like wow, and they yeah, got the energy up. Exactly. I, I was. I don't mind people taking risks. You know uh, what I mean? I, well, it was a big. Like, that's why I told you like the that day when you were all like, "Hey, I'm gonna shoot this. Is everyone cool with it going?" on the web and i was like nah dog i ain't cool with that not yet and then i did it and then you're like are you cool with that? i was like i already did it go ahead like <laughs> yeah. but like I, but that's the whole reason why i was like hey dude don't put it up yet because i don't know how this is gonna go i really don't it like, was such an anticlimactic fight he, he was like miles you're like it's fine <laughs> <laughs> He pretty much. He's like, don't. And I was like, really? And he's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty much. That's how it went. Nice. I was I was nervous though because I was mainly afraid. Like I was like coming in hot off one job, like straight into the botanical gardens. Like mm-hmm. and I didn't know how I was gonna do, dude. I was tired, but like I just sent it and. It was a great show. I thought everyone did very well, considering. Yeah, for sure. I mean, considering how rusty everyone was. Exactly. Obviously. I haven't done stand-up since probably when we did. And that wasn't a very good show for me, which was the This Is Not Happening. That mm. was like my last show I did, right. I think. And I was really like a kick in my balls because that was not a good show for me. That wasn't a good show for most people. Yeah, well, that was also that a, was a weird. T- it was a situation. storytelling show, and I started telling tales of working mm. at a mental hospital, and it just did not bode well for me there. Like, I'm so sorry I didn't come to that show, you guys. I, I was like home, and I was like actually really sick, and I thought I was dying of the Rona, and then I felt really bad for going out, and I was like, I'm really sorry. It's all right. Mean. I mean, if there's, I don't want to say it was one to miss because it was it had its moments and had a great turnout there's a shitload of people there but it was very rowdy um a lot of people did not like i don't know and maybe this is just me like a lot of my comedy is telling stories so i was like everyone can just do this and a lot of people were just like not like you know people were just doing their bits like it was regular, and then it was route. Like it was rowdy because, like early on, a couple people. I don't want to call anyone out, but a couple people did some stories that were just kind of like long and pointless and droning on, and you could just hear the crowd just go, uh, and then you couldn't hear anything. And I was like five minutes, and it was like fifteen minutes later they're done with their story. It was it was one of those things the first time we tried it. You know, it was a trial yeah, run. Sto- storytelling comedy is uh, one of those things where I still want to do that though. I, I, I mean, I I the really like theater the idea. would be a good place to do that. I well, that mean, was that was the other thing too. Is we it was the the first time we did like more of a show and less of an open mic at the whiskey company. Yeah, and it was just a rowdy Thursday night in general. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if and they didn't have they have actually I just went there they have a stage now and like a light and stuff so. I think it'll be better there in the future. I'm very excited to go back there and work with those guys. They again, are such a cool venue. I yeah, really like them. It's a, a it's a great spot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would say just don't feel bad about it. And uh, and that being your last show is kind of like man. Yeah. So my confidence wasn't through the roof, but I also knew like I think one of the biggest things is right before I went up, you were all like, "Hey, dude, it's just like getting on that bike again." And exactly that. Once I got on there and the mic was back in my hand, it was just kind of like, okay. I mean, that's how I always am. I'm always the most nervous right before I go up, and then I get on stage, and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. The worst that could happen is, like, your grandmother walks in on you. (laughs) And then, you know what? You eventually get back on the grill again. (laughs) Not your grandmother, but... (laughs) That was the story I told that night. It was about being walked in on my grandmother. That is true. I remember that. (laughs) So that's the worst thing that can happen. I'll get back on that stage again. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Your my grandma's not even here. Like, yeah. who cares? Your grandma starts getting you socks instead of Bibles. You're like, okay, the life has changed. She gets it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that was, I mean, that was the last time for most people. I did I did a show the next night, which was right when the Rona hit, and we had a fucking really horrible turnout. That was the last show at Schmiggity's. But then I've done, I've done two online open mics. You've done one or two. How many have you done, Kaylin? Oh, I did one with Burke Masters. Uh, oh, yeah. How did that go? You asked me to get on there, and then I'm not going to lie to you. I ended up taking a nap. It's okay. It's <laughs> fine. I actually uh, I pretty much told almost no one about that show. Uh, not because I didn't want to support Mark, which you should. I mean, if, uh, Shout out to Mark Masters. There, shout out to Mark Masters. Like, he does a great job organizing stuff for us and keeping this going. But frankly, I was just scared because I hadn't been up in a long time. And 
the whole format was super weird and and honestly like when you're on zoom and like most of your audience is muted like you don't know if like where you're going with something is working you know so it's like there's not a lot of interaction and that's just the nature of the format so i was like a little nervous so i didn't like publicize it as much as i should have but it was a cool it was a you know it it, it, honestly something it it felt like this it felt like a podcast like it felt like we were just like hanging out and just shooting the shit so it really wasn't uh, as intimidating as I thought it's it was. probably something. how it should be, though, is if you're not feeling like you're just hanging out talking, you know. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, it's also, like, the point of doing comedy is you want to get some reaction, so it's <laughs> tough if you don't. Yeah, I feel that. But that's the I think that's what I was saying. The best way to go about it is, like, it's just a conversation, just hanging out, mm-hmm. just talking to some people that aren't talking back to me, apparently. So It's just kind of like, how well can I execute the same way I do like when I'm practicing by myself? How well can I execute that on the spot is that, almost what it's like. But you also did, I mean, I did it a couple times, and the first time, like... My first little joke, it was just like silence, and I was like, I like immediately got like flushed with like a nervous energy, and then I did like I just went right into the second one, and I actually got whatever the microphones is, which I got some laughs back, and I was like, oh, I'm good now, like it's cool, but well, and that's the weird thing. I mean, like I feel like that you always hear people say like uh, comedians say things like with timing, you know, like you know, like you can just like be like a jokester and just like make jokes or whatever, but like comedians, like it's like about like how you say whatever is funny and you can say something that isn't even that funny but if you say it with the right timing it's funny exactly and, and like it's super weird to get your timing right if you can't hear the audience react oh yeah. for sure and that's there's been times where like i've done the same bits at open mic and crowd or whatever it was like one time people laugh and the next time people don't laugh and I've heard people be like, well, your timing was, like, way different than the last time I heard you. And I was like, yes, and also, like, no. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, it's it's hard to have good timing sometimes when it's, like, the deafening silence always, like, throws you off if you get, like, not the reaction you were hoping for. Yeah. You know? It was actually kind of helpful. I don't know if you guys have been, like, watching any of, like, the, the people doing, like, any of the late night shows um, during Corona, but, like, Watching them is, like, helpful for that because, like, so many of those people, like, they thrive off of a, of a live audience. They're basically doing a stand-up show but, like, in a news environment. And he, I don't know. Like, I, I just, like, love John Oliver more than anything. And he's just always like, this is me talking to a white void because this is who I am because I'm British. And this is, like, basically who, how I live all the time. And I'm just like, that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm. And if you, and he just, like, his, like, weird rants into the abyss, like, seem to make sense. And so that's kind of the approach I took, and it, and it worked out okay. <laughs> right. And, like, I like that they did that with uh, SNL, too. They were just, like, sent oh, the video was, cameras. were like, make skits at home. And they're like, fuck it, you know? Cecily Strong killed it this season with that, man. She did a lot of good ones from her house mm-hmm. as well. But, yeah, dude, you're set, Kalen, man. Like, I, I, I loved how you ranted, actually. You went <laughs> on a huge rant for a minute that just, like, could, like, I could not stop smiling the entire time. Like, you know, yeah, Kaylin had a great set. Maybe the maybe the strongest of the day. Um, what did you What did you think went well? What did you think uh, could have been better, or how do you feel about it? So, I feel like that probably my biggest problem in general, and like the thing that I would like to change in like the way I do sets is just like memorizing more of my stuff right up front. But I I tend to just like write up until the very last moment. Oh, I do and, and like and honestly because of that I, I like find myself in a position where my timing isn't great because I did just write that stuff but I feel like the jokes are better because I wrote it very like all the way up until the moment I, just like even seeing the crowd and being like I'm gonna use this joke instead uh, sure so I, it's a trade off in a way I feel like when you are doing it at the seat of your pants because I did the same thing I was writing my set like when I, as soon as I sat down, I was like, I luckily have like 20 minutes to finalize it. Mm-hmm. And I snuck jokes in that I, I didn't even know I was going to sneak in. Mm-hmm. Like my whole Star Wars bit uh, about, you know, uh, yeah, Obadiah Wan Sanchez, that was all literally like, I guess I'm going to do this right now. Like it's going to be our okay segue. And I just sent it. And luckily it like played. But luckily also before, 
I don't know what happened, Caitlin, but somehow me and your comedy <laughs> sets were so synced because me and you both plug Star Wars. We both plug Star both Wars, ninjas, ninjas, and <laughs> ugly people, which I feel like. Yeah, like those <laughs> are the, three the Holy things. Trinity. Yeah. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> ugly people, Star Wars, ninjas. I was about to say, though, like, I just found out that Dragon Con got canceled. And so <laughs> I feel like I was what? just, like, trying to, like, bring that into my Dragon life. Dragon okay. Con is. Okay, 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 fine. Comic like, Con let me... in Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Is all it is. Okay. Thank you, But Miles. it's not like specifically like everyone dresses in no, drag. No, it's not it's about just, drag. Everyone just always the name of the con. Like, it's just like, the name of the con. <laughs> well, why would you name it Dragon Con if it's not about dragons? Well, why did they name it Firefly if there were no Fireflies? Firefly. <laughs> See, I never understood that either. Yeah, you know, brown coats, uh, it's a way of life, okay? so <laughs> um, But no, I, I I just got the word that I'm like not able to go to any well, you cons you were going to go year. to it? Oh yeah, I go, I, I go every convention person. Yeah, I go every year. Really? Do you dress uh, up? Uh, of course. What do you dress up as? Uh, I have a rotating. Like you have like rotating go tos, or is it different every time? Um, so I have some go tos. Okay, so Arwen. We should go to Comic Con next year when it opens. Like. Fuck it, I'll go. <laughs> I, I was gonna be like Comic Con. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I'm saying like Comedy Con. Comedy Con. Comedy Con. Comedy Con. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. Next year. But yeah, no, I've, I've been going to Dragon Con ever since I was in high school, actually, because I grew up in Atlanta, and it's like, it's a really big deal down there. Like, it's like 50,000 people, and it's like five hotels. They're completely rented out months and months and months in advance, and it's like no open container laws, and it's just a bunch of stormtroopers getting like more blitz than you've ever seen them, just like wandering around downtown Atlanta. It's a that's, it's that's why they're such terrible shots. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all come from Dragon Con. And, uh, uh, so I threw up so in my good. Helmet. So anyway, like I had to give a little bit of a shout out to like the things that I care most about in life, which is you know ugly people, Star Wars, and ninjas. And I feel like that that was probably heavily influenced by. The cancellation of Dragon Con. <laughs> I don't know when you uh, when you appreciate that demographic. Mine was just subbing <laughs> another N word in for something else. Uh, That's so ICP of you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hey, you take I, that back I, right I, now. Hey, 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 you take that back right now. All right, I was a Hollywood undead fan. Can you tell me how magnets school. work? <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I was in North Pole and a South Pole. They're attracted to each other, and then joint. I guess that's what Bill Nye taught me. I don't know. I believe it. But joint. So, I feel like that's still a nice. Anyways, idea. back to Kalen's set. So, what what did you think was your your best joke? What landed the best? Ooh, I want to think about that. Uh, me. I don't know. The, okay, so the one that definitely got the most like ooze or whatever. Like in, they're not quite booze, but they're almost there. You they're know, just, it's just ooze, like they just minus the B. Yeah, exactly. It was uh, Ooh, I like when that, I though. when I talked about uh uh. <laughs> 2020 aging as well as seven like you know americans over the age of 70 yep. you know or whatever uh that 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 went not well but well because i was like that's exactly what i wanted um but then the other one was that i, I honestly to me like the whole comparison of masks and condoms that's my so, favorite uh women are just more equipped for this than men i'm sorry guys <laughs> Uh, we've been convincing y'all to wear condoms for the last 150 years, so we know what it's like to have this conversation. A little discomfort for my benefit, that's what it's all about. <laughs> you know? Um, and, and, and I did look that up, and it has been 150 years since the condom was invented. This is a true fact. You guys didn't know you'd be learning at this comedy show, but you are. Which I, I really, every time, I, I still hear an old white man tell me he doesn't want to wear a mask or whatever. What about I, old I black just, men? Do they tell you to wear a mask? I just flashback to college and just like every fuck boy I ever knew just being like, oh no, babe, like I'm promised, like it's <laughs> cool. Like you're good, I'm good, like we're all good. I'm like, put a goddamn condom on. Yeah. I don't you're know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Strap I up, don't asshole. don't know where you've been. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I know that this is like a, a terrible thing to say perhaps, but like for me as a female, Pregnancy's never been my biggest concern because you know, like, there's some solutions there. Uh, but AIDS, like, or herpes, like, get the fuck out of here. Donald put Glover a, has a put whole a set on this. Put a fucking that I condom love. on. Like, I'd rather have AIDS because of the same thing. Like, you could only date people who have them. Like, as in, like, if you, so, so many of my friends learn the hard way, and that's why all of my friends at home have like four have AIDS. Ki- no, have four oh. kids. It's because it's like I was like, you did not finish that sentence. Yeah, no, they're like, blended really families. Exactly. No, they're blended Obviously families they because it's you. like, oh, dude, I got two kids. What am I gonna do? Oh, you better 
best date somebody with two kids as well because otherwise, and like, it's the Brady kids. Bunch still living, yeah. Dude, yeah. All, like, all of my friends back home are like, oh, yeah, no, I can't go anywhere. I got five kids, but only one of them is mine. It's definitely a thing where, like, if you have kids young, trying to find people who don't have kids, like, hey, you want to come support my kids? They're like, ooh, I don't know. So you got to find someone yeah. who's in the same position. And or then you have a kid. giant family. Yeah, but guess what? Yeah. Herpes never graduates and moves out. Like, oh! so. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. Put a condom on and, and a mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Top that. mask and bottom mask, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And there you go. At one point in college, I was actually sponsored by the Great American Condom Campaign. Shout out to Because they guys. saw that you shouldn't have been born, and they were like, here's, here's, <laughs> here's 500 <laughs> per semester. Please stop you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you want something like this? And then you're just like, hey. <laughs> this could have been I prevented. Had only you used was, like, been sponsored. Like, the semester would start, and, like, this just ambiguous brown box would show up at my door, and I'd open it, and there'd be 500 random Trojan brand condoms in it. Nice. So I would start the semester and be like, let the rubber meet the road. Hey. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, um, more like let the rubber meet the chodes. <laughs> so, uh, Doc, uh, when I was 18, I graduated from high school, and uh, my dad dropped me off at a raft guide company like a day afterwards. So I was just like fresh blood, and about two weeks into that, he sent me a care package, and I thought it would be candy. It was 100% Trojan condoms. And I was like, 100%? Not even like a cookie? Not even a cookie. Not even a single other thing. Not not even a flavored condom. Just straight latex. Like like halfway in between (laughs) a candy. And And I opened this in front of everyone. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be cookies. I thought it was going to be something cool. Hey, my dad just sent me a package, And I was like, hey, my dad thinks that everyone here is having sex with me. Awesome. The guy saw you open the box and they all started licking their chops and I was just like, like good. guess who's into this I know I was just like good god man like what <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think I'm doing up here I'm just going on hikes yeah, like it's not like a euphemism I actually have hobbies yeah, yeah, I'm, just like, I'm going good for miles Lord. that's not what I mean oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no yeah so it, it could be worse at least you got sponsored like it, was, yeah. it wasn't a family member being like you degenerate like <laughs> well, I'm just, you're lucky you got Trojans we used to for like the the recruiting table for the rugby team, we'd just go to Planned Parenthood and be like, can we have condoms, please? And they'd be like, sure. And they would give us like a trash bag full of fucking Durex, the worst. Like, there's like an 80% chance that Durex breaks if you wear They're one. They're just the fingertips off of broken gloves. They ba- Yeah. They literally <laughs> just snip sure. old surgical gloves, used ones. <laughs> certified pre-owned. Yeah, certified pre-owned. That's actually how tips. Plain Pinhead stays in business, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a vertical integration. Yeah. Oh, right? shit. It's called recycling, guys. It's green. Damn it. Oh, God. <laughs> Growing up in Alabama, they just were like, hey, if you go to the gas station, be sure to have 75 cents to go into the bathroom. Because oh, that's, that's how you get those scratch I got the old <laughs> scratch and sniff. <laughs> oh, I got pickleback flavor. <laughs> it's better than nickelback flavor. Oh. <laughs> so, dude, we actually had to have a... Look at this pro <laughs> 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 I was trying to think of it. <laughs> well done. It's time to go was almost around. my class song, and then we were like, no. <laughs> no. Literally, enough with I the I thought pe- it was the Alabama national anthem. <laughs> no. Literally, actually, in my group of friends, playing Nickelback was literally hey. a way to go to jail. As in, like, it was b- a bad omen. Like, you're like, oh, fuck, nah, I ain't. I ain't doing the run tonight, dog. They just played Photograph on the radio. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's like, it's like a know. white lighter. <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> it's like yeah. the white lighter of music. <laughs> it's the white lighter of music. Literally, like, oh, shit, dude. Nah, dude. Nickelback just, nah. Okay, nah. but can we talk for real, though? Because my class of 2007 gave Hoopa Stank our class song. We pro- Wait, What was the reason for the that? The reason. Oh, the reason is yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah. No, we, we immediately. Yeah, I love the piano part in that. You know what it is? It's. Ding 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 It's one note. That's actually how a lot of Kanye songs go, but don't worry, he's a genius. Hey, you play off of Kanye. Twenty twenty. Right now he's obviously on bars. Like at least he should be behind bars. Shut up. It was how many of us did Kanye jokes? Three, four. I did. I did one Kanye joke, but it was a segue joke. I also did one. 
Yeah, yeah. But I was. My was, was a segue. How taken. can we not though? I mean, I like, mean, it's God. just the lowest of the hanging. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. right there next to Joe Exotic jokes. I mean. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> which we all. Did. I I did not as a member okay, of the okay, South. Okay, I could okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> I could not mock yeah. that man. <laughs> He's a hero. <laughs> He's a fucking saint. <laughs> I'm literally fella. wearing a Joe Exotic t-shirt right now. And That's it's actually the super accurate. Best. <laughs> it's three tigers howling at the Joe Exotic moon, and it's the greatest <laughs> thing you've ever seen with your eyes. All, the th- all three of those tigers represent each one of his husbands. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem to have more teeth though i don't know that's 100 percent true yeah. although you and can only not see as many four. four-wheelers <laughs> <laughs> literally it's like hey it's man they bought me one he bought me guns he bought me four-wheelers yeah. he, he bought, bought me, me crystal tr- meth he bought me a <laughs> truck i don't think gun. there's any way that the 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 big handsome one i don't think he actually ever banged joe i bet joe blew him like twice when he was super high and that's it probably because they said he was banging every chick in the park, was what they were saying at the end of the documentary. Yeah, but he was also like, dude, if this dude sucks my dick like twice a year, I get as many four wheels as I want. <laughs> you can have yeah, your right? cats and eat like, it too. Whoops. He's Whoop. like, what is the downside? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I close my eyes, my he dick gets sucked, and I get a so fucking razor the next was. day. Well, <laughs> he did kind of shoot himself in the head, spoiler alert, so oh, there could have been better sorry. situations. Yeah, I forgot that. Russian roulette happened. Oh, Anyways, blew my um, mind. where are we at? Let's talk about me. <laughs> yeah, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Kyler. I I'm guess Kyle. You watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, Kyle with a K. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle with a bullshit. K. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle with a K. None of that sile bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope you don't. You're not spelled with a Q. <laughs> Quile. <laughs> Quile. It's been a, and it's been a quile. <laughs> Talking Nickelback again. Yeah. His name is Kyle with a QW. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a bird. That's a flightless bird. <laughs> yeah, like, like you're saying quail wrong. You just are. It's my favorite quiet. part of Doug when he was quail man. <laughs> Oh, you make a good quail man. Thanks, man. One yeah. of five I mean, I usually just wear my underpants over my shorts just for the hell of it. Yeah. I think the belt on the forehead is the key. That is, yeah, key. That is the key. Well, if, I'll tell you what. If we go to Comedy Con. Quail or, Man. Yes. Oh, my God. Dragon Con next year, uh, I will Dude, if we go I'll to Dragon Con, then after Atlanta, we have to road trip down into lower Alabama and then to New Orleans after that. I was about to say, though, if we go to Atlanta, you guys have to let me take you to the Claremont Lounge, and we're going to watch some strippers cr- crush some beer cans with their titties. I want to see that. Totally down. Yeah, Three times. times. And ash cheeks. I haven't seen it since college. And ash cheeks. <laughs> Never seen it with Ash. Ash Shakes. Mm, yeah, well, you haven't been to Atlanta. That's so, <laughs> well, Atlanta. I've just been to the Atlanta Zoo and Aquarium. It's very similar. Yeah. Wild <laughs> animals. <laughs> um, but yes, we need to keep this thing moving. Yeah, Kyle, so, let's talk about your shit. Yeah, so I hosted both shows and I did. How was, how was that having to do how two is shows opening, back to back? Honestly. Um, opening is fine. <laughs> is it? Is it? I, mean, I mean, it's just, good if you if you have a good set. That's like how you know like your shit is good. It's like kind of strong, and it also like the thing I like most about hosting isn't going first. It's uh, being able to riff a little bit in between sets and throw some silly things out there and that kind of shit. Freestyle a little bit. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, I like that you're kind of the voice of the crowd. If we're all laughing or making fun of something that you don't feel handcuffed to not say it sure that's <laughs> that's something uh it. if you listen to a podcast a couple times back we did with pat and we were talking about what it's like hosting shows and he's he's made that point which is something i try to think about more now is he's like if you're the host like you you are speaking be on behalf of the crowd so if there's like something that's like obvious like you gotta say it like you gotta address it and like that's the easiest way to like make sure everyone's on the same page i try to listen to everyone's set and try to make some kind of joke based off of the jokes that they said, that kind of thing, and go from there. But it was fun. I, I uh, both shows were great. I had a lot of fun. Both shows. It was all I did entirely new material. It was the same set for both ones, but it was uh, it was all stuff I hadn't done before, and I was pretty happy with it. I could have been a little sharper. Um, kind of same thing you were saying, like just going up to the last second. Uh, and deal with some of the stuff. This my timing can get better. Like these, the the set was good enough. I think it's something I'm gonna keep using and then try to just make it a little tighter. Definitely keep using your COVID for president. Like oh, bit. big Rona 2020 getting done. <laughs> oh, for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> nice. I yeah. Like that, yeah. I like that bit. Yeah. But I gotta get serious with you guys. On that note, with the election coming up, 
I think that there's one clear choice what we got to do. With all this pandemic, we got to stick with the current course, with the current leadership. Yeah, that's right. That's why I'm voting for the coronavirus. Four more years of coronavirus. Four more years. Right? I mean, Donald Trump's the president, but COVID-19 is the one dictating policy. And I got to say, it served me better than any Democrat or Republican ever has. That's for sure. I mean, Bernie Sanders has been trying to bribe me with free stuff for 20 years. Big Rona got it done in a couple of months. <laughs> I'm living large. A bit. Yeah. Mm. Well, it definitely reflects your, like, I think, actual, like, political agenda, which is like, right. I just want this shit all along. Like, I fucking hate all of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. Yeah, no, it was, um, um, that bit was good. I thought it was good. I, and that was one that I I had done a couple times on the online open mics, but I kind of tweaked it a little bit, changed it around a little bit. Um, I also, I, I really liked your, uh, the, like observation that everybody's just like on two opposite ends of an extreme here. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like sure. that I just talked about that constantly and it's like, and it's really hard to know how to react when everybody is just reacting either in a really over the top way or really just like completely ridiculous, like dismissive way. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, there has to be some kind of common ground. Yeah. But Facebook it, is a cesspool. Right? It's the worst because I feel like <laughs> the mass majority of people really aren't probably posting that much but the select few that decide to like be like i need to post every 15 minutes there's like six people on my feed i swear to god it's just them I yeah and i'm like dude like you decide yeah. to post every 15 minutes about how your day is going for starters that's probably wrong <laughs> like i'm here for like funny pictures of shit like right. come on bro like every 15 minutes doesn't need to be like your pretend medical expertise on yeah. display. I, I honestly don't even know what Facebook is for anymore. And I feel like that's <laughs> that's my problem. I get on it and I'm just like, why am I here? Like, And I feel like I just keep deleting it. And the only reason I come back is Steamo Yard Sale because I'm trying to get that free <laughs> shit from rich people. Yes, hun. But like, so much <laughs> of this house is brought to you by Steamo Yard, <laughs> Yard Sale. I know. Yard sale. That's the only yeah. reason I keep it. So don't, it's basically no. Craigslist. So <laughs> it's like... Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Over. Our, our roommate is a fucking just predator on the internet baby. dude like he's he's constantly on marketplace and other things but mostly marketplace and he'll pick shit up for like 10 bucks and resell it for like 300 dollars all the fucking time dude i mean it's just such a side hustle and it's just fascinating because you learn so much about people just like watching steamboat yard sale like <laughs> right out you're like damn i'm like this bitch is trying to sell like five thousand dollars worth of snap-on tools for 25 bucks who'd he fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh there's such shit there's there was Recently one the divorced. i just saw <laughs> you post a pair of child's tivas oh um, yeah i did i found them in the middle of fish creek falls road i was like <laughs> i thought that they might be my size because i have very small feet but uh they're children's like nines so did you sell them that's a no i put them back up i was trying to get them to their rightful owner now that I realize I can't steal them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, there's, there's a statute of limitations there, I think. Uh, yeah, and you yeah. just gotta hide them for like 30 days and then you can sell them. Right, you 100%. lose your shoes, you're immediately defeated. You have a problem. <laughs> it's a condition, okay? <laughs> <laughs> defeated. <laughs> Actually, I got that, that rocking chair next to you on uh, Facebook Marketplace. No big deal. Yeah, oh the thing that holds your laundry. Sometimes, sometimes it holds my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Which does it? I mean, so. it, it's better as it can. <laughs> <laughs> we all have the chair that's just for half dirty clothes. They're not oh, quite yeah. dirty. They're just exactly. half dirty. <laughs> Basically, everything that looks like a nook and or a cranny in this room is something that holds my dirty laundry at some point. I like how everyone's looking around for like the different places where <laughs> I can put laundry. Where's your dirty laundry? <laughs> projector. <laughs> he hangs all the projector right there. <laughs> just shirts on projectors. Mm -hmm. Incredible. It's like college all over again. I think you're house. just projecting your own dirtiness oh, onto me. Oh, Both of you. I, I, can, I, just, I can do this with Doc all day long. Yeah. I can hang. Punny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to catch. I, I could definitely catch what you guys have, and I already have a problem doing it sometimes. And I don't want this. I mean, you've already got AIDS, isn't that what you were saying earlier? No, oh. I don't know what I was saying earlier. How did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> did you get that when you're fisting the boys, or no? no. I, I see. <laughs> 
unrelated earring incident. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously, that would be the worst way to get AIDS, though. <laughs> if an you earring or fisting from, boys? <laughs> no, no, from like an earring. Because at least oh. fisting boys, I assume you got something out of it. But <laughs> 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 yeah. Or into it. Yeah, or into it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but if you, if you Probably a little bit of both, man. If somebody repeat. just like talked you into getting an ear piercing in the pause, and then, like three <laughs> weeks later, you're like, I have full blown AIDS. Like, right. that would be. That's the worst. Like, you're sitting in a toilet way. seat and you get crabs. It's like, this isn't even a good story. Yeah, it's not no. even. You know? It's exactly. just like just Thursday like, again. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. right, well, Sorry, kerosene takes care of that. We're coming up on about an hour, folks. So does anyone have any any closing thoughts on the show? Any other things? Anything of grievances, perhaps? Um, I want to just say that I think that the person that had the best stage presence of anyone there, and I'm sorry, Pat, to say this, but it was that little ass girl that you brought oh up on God. stage. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Can that we was, talk dude, about that I had to watch, like, a whole video because, like, when you put a video on YouTube, there's a pop thing that pops up, and it's like, are there children in this video? And I was like, oh, shit, there is. There's there a is child a child in this video. Because there's, to, to explain the story, we Pat was, like, towards the end of his set, and because it's out there and there's a pond behind, there is this little girl who is probably, what, maybe like four years old. Yeah. And she was playing in the water or whatever. And she comes up behind and Pat, of course, is like, oh, hey. And like brings her up on stage and is like, what's your name? And she's like, eh, I don't remember. She's like, Shanique. No, it wasn't. It was like. Uh, <laughs> Charcuterie. <laughs> yeah. This is Chili Keeley's. She's like, the name's Bondsworth, see? <laughs> but, uh. But no, she was hilarious. She was so cute and uh, a total sweetheart. And Pat did a great job talking to her. But then afterwards, I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's like, do I have to cut this? Because I didn't think about it. And I uploaded it. And it was after I uploaded it. They're like, oh, by the way, is there a child in this? And I was like, ooh. Just like a Beastie Boys song, dude. You just don't even know until afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, the, the, the video was demonetized because of the Beastie Boys song that Matt wanted. Thanks, Matt. But not my uh, Saigon song no, featuring Jay Z. Like, well, it just it just came up and says demonetized, and I was like, "Damn!" It was like, "Do you want to know why?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to know why." So I click on it, and they're like, "Here!" And it just cut to like a like a thirty second segment, and it was the Beastie Boys song before Matt came on. And I was like, Dang. "Son of a bitch, Beastie Boys!" Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I saw the Beastie Boy I mean, now. I know. Like, I oh, like, that's right. There's plural. only one one of three. Ain't plural. Ed Rock I mean, is of, dead. One of them is a bartender in my area back home, actually, in outside the Philadelphia area. Why would he bartend? He's a fucking multi-millionaire. Oh, he, DJ, he DJs as well. Oh. But he was DJing slash bartending that night. Yeah, he probably just didn't give a shit. He's just mad impressive. He's yeah. just a fucking beastie man. I think that's, that's <laughs> Mike D. I think, I think Mike D is the only one left. I'm, Mike D is the only one? I'm not, I could be wrong. I'm oh, probably this is, wrong. Yeah, this is three or four years since I've been back. So. Yeah. Quick Beastie that's Boys story. We tried to dress up like the Beastie Boys for a... Uh, uh, costume party it was circa the fight for your right to party music video and i was ad rock and ad rock just wears a red hat and a red shirt and at the time i still had my handlebar mustache and i rolled into this party and eight out of nine people was like oh it's mario and i was like <laughs> fuck and so i went and i changed <laughs> <laughs> good call bro <laughs> You're going to um, go down some wrong pipes that night. Hey. So, uh, oh, I, I, womp, womp. <laughs> womp, I'm hiding womp. behind my microphone right now. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, my boyfriend calls Mario Mario. <laughs> what is he? Is he from like the East Coast? Yeah, he's from fucking Philadelphia. I didn't know that was a thing until recently. So I was like, "Oh, you're playing Mario?" And I was like, "What? What?" I was like, <laughs> "He says his own name in the game. He's like, it's a me, a Mario. He's literally, it's he me, says, Mario. It's a me, he's like, oh, okay, Mario. Mario. And they're just like, yeah, Mario. And I'm just like, that's just incorrect. And he's like, no, it's not. And I'm just like. I'm just gonna I think say I think that very, we have a problem with our A's, like just like, like drafting them glass. in school. Like, <laughs> hey! 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 That's, That's how you do it. it. That's how you do it. Yeah. I know. How do you spell Mario with a C? <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a place in Egypt, kind of. <laughs> Macryo. <laughs> Macryo. <laughs> oh. But yes, no. So uh, if you probably wrap this up. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like a great we were show. Not earlier. Make sure to wrap it up. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. when you're fisting boys, and, and wrap up your <laughs> face and wrap up your dick. Yeah. It's Top not for you. It's for me. Yes. For the gals. <laughs> Both. For the gals. <laughs> it's really for you too. Ferda. Yep. All right. Well, um, this is a great show. We're gonna try to do it again soon. Stay tuned. 
excuse me, I'm all burpy now all of a sudden that I have something important to say. <coughs> Try that again. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> Steamboat Comedy on all your social media platforms. Steamboatcomedy.com will keep you posted. I'm hoping, what do you guys think? I'm hoping to do a show of the Botanic Gardens maybe like once a month. Yeah, yeah, let's do it again for August. Why not? You know, yeah. let's do it. I mean, we like I said, we, we sold out real quick last time, and it was just basically off the, the newspaper article helped and also just like uh, uh, posters that I printed out for cheap and put around downtown. I saw and one at the laundromat the other day. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah, Doc put that there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the big one is I put them at Hippie Hot Springs. That's a smart move. Yeah, but, there's yeah. a ton of people there. I slapped them at Hippie Hot Springs, and like that day, like, Shit filled up. I'm like, oh, go on, go on. Mm-hmm. It's like people who are outside doing free stuff. Like, want to come outside and do another free thing? Huh? <laughs> nah. Speaking nah. of my language. <laughs> yeah, right? They're like, you know, I could be into that. Free yeah. and fun? I'll have some. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was great, and we're hoping to do it again. And uh, Botanic Gardens was great. And again, shout out to our guy, Pat Truer, for helping out again. He's a stud. He did a great job. And check it out on the, the YouTube channel if you haven't seen the show yet, or SteamboatComedy.com. And that's about all I got. You guys, anything other any parting words of wisdom? I want some of that pizza over there. <laughs> <Some Zabra. laughs> you can try it. Just <laughs> grab it out of my cold dead fingers. Uh, there's a whole box <laughs> behind you. Why no, would Miles. I want that piece? No, Miles. She's like, no, fight me. me. <laughs> <laughs> there's literally a whole box behind you. You want a piece this of me? The only no. way. <laughs> I want the piece over there. You want a piece of me? That does have a condition. <laughs> <laughs> We're not just talking yeah. about all the right, idiots. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. We will catch you next time. Woo. Goodbye. Mm, oh, my God. <laughs> my hair is dreaded around this already. Oh, God. I have to take the rope like this. Rain or shine, it's here to make you laugh. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast.